Hey guys, Sam from Enerdrive here. Uh, today we're going to run you through how to recalibrate your Cymarine display if you've ever accidentally gone through the settings and done a factory reset. So I've got a Traveler system here with me today, obviously with a Cymarine display on the front as well, and we'll take you through what settings you need to run through on the display and also through the Cymarine app on your smartphone. So let's dive in. So first things first, make sure you've got both the Cymarine app downloaded and also the Pico FW Updater app. Then once you've done that, jump into the Pico FW Updater app and make sure that you follow the instructions to update your Cymarine firmware, ensuring that everything's up to date and then you're good to go for the rest of this video. So now what we've got to do first is find out what our Cymarine network username and password are so we can use that to log in on our phones. So you do this by tapping onto the circle button here to wake it up. Do a long press and you want to scroll down until you hit Wi-Fi, tap the circle to confirm, scroll down again until we hit Wi-Fi reset at the bottom. So tap the circle to confirm. Now that's going to present you with both the name of the network that you need to find on your phone and also the password to access that network. So now all we have to do is jump onto our phone, find the network and plug in these details. So now that I've brought up the Wi-Fi network options on my phone, what we need to do is try and locate the network that was displaying on our Cymarine display earlier. So for me, that was coming up as Pico 0227, which is this one in the middle here. So I'm going to tap into there. It asked for the password, which again we got earlier. So in this case, I'm going to plug that in, hit connect. Now we've connected to the network, but you'll notice I got a little message here saying that there's no internet available. That's totally normal. You don't need to worry about that. So the next step is now jumping into the actual Cymarine app itself. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that we've connected to the network, let's jump into the Cymarine app and click on the little gear up the top left here. This is gonna show our devices that we configure. So let's jump into the top option there for devices. And we want to select the top option again for add new device. So what we're going to do first is set up our battery. So click on battery here. If we presented with this screen, what we want to choose is SC301U1. So I'll tap that, hit select device. Now what it's showing here is the list of configurations we can set for our battery. So starting with the label, let's call this house battery instead. You might even change this to canopy battery. Now the type of battery, let's go with lithium down the bottom. You can leave the voltmeter as is. And next we want to change the shunts. So tap into that. And we want to select the first option here, SC301. Turn that on, hit OK. Now for capacity, you just want to change this to whatever capacity battery you have. So for example, let's choose a 200 amp battery hit done, everything else you can remain as is and hit save values. So now we've set up our battery, all that's left to do is jump into our shunt now and change the system devices there. Okay, so now that we've set up our battery, we wanna jump into the next option, SC301. We're gonna change the label to total accumulative power figure. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the reason we're doing this is essentially what this is going to measure is everything going in and out of the battery. So it looks at all the different channels and the drawers versus the charge sources, takes that into consideration and then gives you one neat little figure showing you exactly what's going in and out of your battery, keeping it nice and simple. Now jump into range. So we're going to have an inverter on this system. So let's change the range to 250 amps just so we can show the full scale. Next, you want to make sure that you have add current turned on for this one. And also make sure you have your house battery that we configured earlier selected under this drop down menu. If you've done all of that correctly, you can then hit save values. So that's all set up now. All we have left is to jump into our each individual channels and configure them accordingly. So some of you guys might also have a quad shunt. And what that's gonna mean is when you go inside the app to change the device settings, you're gonna see some extra channels there that you'll need to configure. For example, we've got an adventurer system here with an SCQ50 shunt. 
Now, if I was then to go into the device settings for say, one of the channels controlling the DC-DC, on this particular build, you'll see we've got it connected both to the quad shunt and also to the main shunt. Now, why is that relevant? If we then were to leave on the add current switch, like we did on the system load, it's actually gonna draw the reading for that twice. So in this instance, we're gonna leave that off this time. However, the rest of the settings, you can apply the same methodology. So we've set up our DC charger now. Let's jump in for the rest of our channels. So I know on this system, we have our lights on channel two. So I'll select channel two here. Rename this accordingly. And for our range, they're five amp lights. So let's change the range to 10 to give it a bit of space. Turn the add current off and select our house battery again. And we can just hit save values. Now on channel three, we have a fridge. So I'll jump in there. Again, change the name accordingly. This is 10 amp fridge, so we're gonna change the range to be just over that at 15. Add current off, set the house battery, hit save values. Now I'm gonna show you how to merge two channels together. You might need to merge channels if you know you have, for example, an SCQ25T shunt. Now they limit out each channel at 25 amps each. So if you wanna run a DC-DC40, for example, and run it through that shunt, you're gonna to need to combine two 25 amp channels together for a total of 50 amps. So you can bypass that limitation. Now we do this on the panel itself, rather than the Cymarine app, because unfortunately there's not the functionality there to do it on your phone. So I'll wake up our display here, long press on the circle button to open up the settings. Go down to devices, tap into that. Go into current sensors. Now this is gonna show us the channels that we configured earlier. If we open up our DC channel, scroll on down until we hit merge with right at the bottom. Currently it's set to not selected. If we jump into that, we can now choose which channel we wanna merge this with. So I've got an empty channel here just for the sake of this display. Uh, number four down the bottom. I'm gonna merge those two together and you'll see now that the merge with row has been updated accordingly. So I can jump out of here now and know that those two are safely merged together. So if we look at our channels now on the display, you'll notice that the lights channel actually has a blue line, whereas the fridge has a yellow line. What these colors mean is if it's blue, the system is recognizing that that's actually a charge source on the system. Whereas if it's yellow, it thinks of it as a load drawing charge from the system. So I've intentionally set this up incorrectly to have our lights on a blue color, AKA thinking it's a charge source. And the reason this happens is because the reverse current setting is turned on at the moment. So if you've programmed your Cymarine, it's a good thing to check your channels and make sure they're the right colors. So now I'll show you quickly how we go about fixing that. We jump into our settings, go into devices, current sensors, and then select lights or whatever channel you need to change. Scroll down to reverse current. As you can see, I had that turned on. So now I'm just gonna turn that off. And if we exit out, you'll now see the colors change from blue to yellow. Now correctly recognizing this as a load on the system. Okay guys, so now that we've programmed the Cymarine app on our smartphones, you'll see that we've now on the display got the state of charge percentage coming up. And we've also got access to that on our phones as well. Once you've finished these steps, we recommend also plugging in your AC and charging until you reach float stage. Then check out our quick video on how to resync your Cymarine state of charge. This basically ensures that the readings on your Cymarine display will match up with what's actually happening inside your battery. This then of course goes on to save you from any nasty surprises down the line. So that's it, that's how you reprogram it. Thanks for watching and enjoy.